Hello friends, welcome to the Take Better Photos channel. The ability to adjust color is an essential element of any RAW editor. In this video, we're going to be talking about the most important tool in DxO Photo Lab 7 to do just that, the HSL tool, as we talk about five tips on using this tool to get great photos. So let's get right into it. Before we go on to the tips, let's answer the question, what is the HSL tool? The HSL tool, where HSL stands for Hue, Saturation, and Luminance, allows you to selectively and precisely correct colors using a color wheel, eight color channels, a global channel, as well as three sliders that affect saturation, luminance, and uniformity. It allows you to reinforce or attenuate colors, modify or even replace colors, or standardize the variations of a hue within a color. The selected channel is indicated by a white outline around its dot. As soon as you make an adjustment, a white dot appears under the active channel indicator. To the right of the channel, the curved arrow resets all the adjustments made, both to the settings of the color wheel and to those of the sliders. You can also double click a channel to reset a particular channel. So now that we know what the HSL tool is, let's move on to the tips. The first tip is to know how to use the DxO color wheel. The DxO color wheel's primary purpose is to change a particular hue or color in the image. It consists of the following elements, an outer wheel, which allows you to change the colors of the image, also called the target color, an inner wheel, which represents the source color or the color you want to change, and a color sampler. The behavior of the DxO color wheel depends on whether you select the global channel or one of the color channels. To understand this, let's work with this image. I'll demonstrate the color wheel's behavior with the global channel first. Let's say I want to change the bicycle's orange color to green. Currently, the global channel is selected and there is a white ring around the first circle. When the global channel is selected and no adjustments have been made, as you can see here, the two wheels will be aligned. The blues next to the blues, the reds next to the reds, and the greens next to the greens, etc. The image also maintains the original colors. Since we want to replace the orange with green, let's move the outer wheel to have the outer wheel's green align with the inner wheel's orange. There, the orange has now become green. While that is good, notice that the background color has also been modified and turned into purple. And that is because now cyan, which is the background color, aligns with purple. And that is the disadvantage of using the global channel. All colors are affected. You can see the before and after by control clicking on the channel. Therefore, as a rule, if you want to target just a specific color, do not use the global channel. Instead, use a specific color channel. Let's demonstrate this with this image. Let's say I want to turn the cyan sky and just the sky to blue. To do that, let's select the cyan channel. The color adjustment will now be limited to the cyan hues, making that the target color. Notice that a color range in the inner wheel is selected. To view a mask of the selected colors, control click on the selected color range. As you can see, affected areas are shown in color, while non-affected areas are shown as desaturated. It's a great way to view whether the affected colors are correct. Next, let's move the outer wheel to blue. Hooray! The sky has turned to blue without affecting the other elements. Next, let's turn the orange foreground into green. I'll select orange. Again, I'll verify the affected colors 
by control clicking the selected range. Unfortunately, as you can see here, there are some areas which are being left out. Let's ignore this for now. I'll move the outer wheel to green. For good measure, I'll reduce the saturation and increase the luminance. There, a nice result. But how do we deal with the misselections? The reason areas were left out was its color was more reddish than orange. Fortunately, the Exos color wheel supports widening the range of selected hues. We do that by moving the inner handles. Let's do that now. There, the problem is solved. So that is how to properly use the color wheel. Let's move on to the next tip. The next tip is to use the vibrancy slider instead of saturation for global color enhancement. To understand why, let's first run through the difference between saturation and vibrancy sliders. The saturation slider attenuates or strengthens all the colors in the image. If you move it to the left, the colors or the selected hue gradually shifts to gray. And if you move it to the right, the colors or the selected hue becomes more and more vivid. Vibrancy, on the other hand, operates in a more subtle way. It takes into account the vibrancy of the different colors in the image. DxO calls vibrancy smart color saturation. While vibrancy also increases the overall saturation, it does so with very particular behaviors. Let's show some examples of its behaviors. As you can see, with portrait images, skin tones are protected to avoid red faces, giving a more natural result. You don't get that in a saturation adjustment. In landscapes, the blue sky saturation is increased and slightly darkened to give greater presence and depth to the sky. Greens and reds are also not overdone and give a more pleasant result. In addition, with vibrancy, colors already close to gray are not affected to avoid a change of color balance. For all these reasons, the vibrancy slider is the tool to use for global color enhancement. You're better off using the saturation slider for local color adjustments. So that was the second tip. Let's move on to the third tip. The third tip is to know when to use the HSL tool. To understand when to use HSL, let's work with this image. For this image, the first way I would use HSL is to correct the overly colorful grass. To do that, I'll select the green channel. I'll do a control click to check if the appropriate colors are affected. Next, I'll decrease the saturation slider. There, better looking grass. The second way I would use HSL is to improve a dull blue sky. I'll select the blue channel. I'll increase the saturation. Finally, I'll lower the luminance. The third way I would use HSL in this image is to properly saturate warm colors. In this case, that would be the color in the sheep's ears. For better accuracy, I'll use the color picker to select the color. Next, I'll increase saturation and luminance. The final way I would use HSL is to fix a distracting background. The background here is very colorful, a bit too colorful. Let's use HSL to reduce the saturation and make the subject really stand out. Unfortunately, the background has multiple colors, which makes it troublesome to desaturate with just the HSL panel. A better way would be to use a mask. And that brings us to the fourth tip. Use a mask for more precise HSL adjustments. Fortunately, one of the newly introduced features of Photolab 7 is the ability to perform HSL adjustments on masked areas. Click on the Local Adjustments button. 
I'll use the Auto Mask tool to make the selection. As you can see, Auto Mask did a great job. I'll navigate to the HSL panel, then I'll select the global channel. Next, I'll reduce the saturation. There, a much less distracting background. So that is the fourth tip. Let's move on to the fifth and final tip. The final tip is to do tone adjustments first before HSL adjustments. To understand why, let's edit this image. The image looks washed out and may tempt you to immediately use HSL to correct it. Since the image is overexposed, it's best not to do so yet. Let's fix the exposure problems first. Notice how, by just reducing the exposure, colors come alive on its own. Now we have a better idea of how much color enhancement is needed. Let's use HSL to further enhance the colors. So there you have it, five tips on how to use the HSL tool to get outstanding color in your images. Thankfully, if you are a Photolab 7 user, DxO's HSL tool is one of the best implementations in photo editing. Not only is it well designed, and has more features than most, it works precisely and effectively. Let me know if you have any other tips in using HSL or improving color with DxO Photolab 7. I'd love to hear from you. And if you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share to help keep the videos coming. Until the next video, I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.